I've been asked maybe 10,000 times what I think of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, and that's not an exaggeration. I've had hundreds of comments on the videos that I've posted. I've posted like 40 videos since launch. I've been grinding out content. I also did 36 hours straight of streaming without sleeping, which wasn't the healthiest thing in the world, but it did mean that I was the first person to beat the boss fight in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. And during that, as you can imagine, thousands of comments in the chat saying, hey, just checking in, just stopping by, just on my way to work, just thought I'd say, hey, what are you thinking about the mode? And obviously on social media too, on Twitter, on TikTok or wherever, people want to know, what does Milo think of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies? And the kind of secondary or implicit question is, should you buy Modern Warfare 3 just for the zombies mode? And I I've really tried over the past, what's it been, 10 days, to be very tactical in the way that I've approached answering that question. Because in the community, I stand in a funky place, I feel like. I obviously have a great deal of reach. I'm very familiar to many of you that are watching this video probably, and I've been around for a very long time, so I've seen all of the iterations of zombies as they have come and gone. But I also have a lot of people that feel that my opinion doesn't speak for them, and they're very quick to be critical of anything that I say that doesn't align with their particular stance. And I'm an opinionated person. And sometimes I say things and I say them with my chest and other people are like, this guy's just flat out wrong about this. And like, I wish people would stop listening to him or all those sorts of things, right? So I've tried to approach this year in a way that's been a little different actually to some of the previous years on my channel and to just say, you know what? I'm just not going to share an opinion for a little bit. I'm not going to say this is my rating on day one. I'm not going to say 48 hours in, these are my first impressions and set that into concrete stone in the permanent record of history. I'm actually just not going to do that. I'm going to choose not to participate in that conversation just while I collect my thoughts and make sure that my opinion is as rounded out as it possibly can be. And I'm not going to lie, it's been tricky. There's been moments where I've been like, ah, this is so annoying. It's so frustrating. And it's just sort of leapt out of me. There have been other moments where I've been like, oh, this has been really cool. And I just had so much fun doing that. And again, it's just, it's just leapt out of me. So I'm not pretending that I've been absolutely emotionless and opinionless in the last 10 days, but I've really tried to make sure that whenever I'm asked the question, my response is I'm working on rounding out my thoughts and I'm going to present that to you guys when I'm ready. And I'm now ready. Now, before I share those thoughts, something that is so important for you to think about right now, and this is going to be so fascinating to think about, is the following, okay? Just like play this little game with me for just two seconds. I want you to self-examine for a moment and I want you to think about whether or not you want me to feel a certain way about Modern Warfare Zombies. Like, have you got a preconceived, I want Milo to like it, or I want Milo to dislike it? And be as honest with yourself as you can. Do you feel like, based on the external narratives that surround this game, whether they be positive or negative, you want me to reinforce how you feel and how you feel is currently based on that wider narrative? Or are you counter to that wider narrative and you want me to be on your side in kind of counteracting it? Examining your own biases and trying to explore explore why you feel the way you feel about something is a really interesting mechanism and tool that we can use to make our relationship with, with, with media critique and media discourse more honest and honestly more piercing. Like we can get to the heart of the matter better when we have a notion of what our preconceptions and our biases might be pushing us towards in any given moment. So do you want me to hate modern warfare zombies? be honest. Or do you really want me to love it? Just have a think about that. I'm going to run through several categories now of different areas of analysis that we can evaluate Modern Warfare Zombies by. And then at the end of the video, I will give you my overall thoughts. And we'll also address the big question that kind of looms over all of this, which is, can you justify buying Modern Warfare 3 just for the zombies mode? Is that a good investment or is that a bad idea? Should you buy it? Should you avoid it? Is it a skip? Is it a play? Where do we stand? Quick heads up, my Abomination poster and some of my other Zombies merch in this restock is only going to be available for two more weeks. And if you order during that window, we will make sure to ship your stuff before Christmas so it'll arrive before the big day. So head over to milomerch.com now to make sure that you don't miss out. Category one, gameplay and the sort of overall gameplay loop. The reason I'm specifying both of those here is that the moment to moment gameplay is quite different to the loop that you'll play through in sequential matches where you'll play, then you'll exfil, then you'll play, then you'll exfil, etc. So we'll break both of those down here. The moment to moment gameplay feels solid. 
It feels really solid. It doesn't feel janky. It doesn't feel like the zombies aren't behaving in the way that I'd expect them to. They move the way I want them to. They react to being shot the way I want them to. They sound the way I want them to. They sound fantastic, actually. And so that side of things is a really big thumbs up. It just feels like a solid zombies experience. Now, zooming out a little bit from the 30 second loop, let's talk about the sort of five minute loop. And that's you doing contracts in the game. Are contracts really part of the zombies DNA? Absolutely not. Does that mean that they aren't fun? Well, for me so far, I don't mind the contract system. And for some background context, I really didn't mind the way that DMZ worked either. I found the DMZ overall sort of five minute flow fairly fun. And so this being similar to DMZ doesn't make me sort of scream my head off and explode with rage. It just makes me go, okay, it's not zombies, but there are certainly zombies here attacking me while I'm trying to do these tasks. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, on the one hand, if you're the sort of player that just wants to engage in some kind of gameplay experience that's going to grip you for a few minutes while you try and do a given gameplay objective, and then it's going to slingshot you towards some kind of other objective, a different contract or what have you, and ping pong you back and forth between them over the course of your 45 minute match, then yeah, I think that there's a lot of fun to be had here. And there is also a decent amount of breadth in the difficulty of those experiences. So in that initial tier one zone, it's not difficult to survive. It's very easy actually to do anything in that tier one area. But if you want to do some of the more exciting stuff, then you do need to push into tier three. And tier three is just not an easy space to be in. And that's a good thing. There is a good breadth of difficulty there. And so that is also a thumbs up, I would say. Now, if you're looking for the zombies gameplay loop of feeling like getting through the round is the real reason that you're there and the survival aspect is really important to you, you're not going to get that from Modern Warfare Zombies. You'll get a little bit of the same difficulty feel from Tier 3, but when we talk about the overall gameplay loop of the match-to-match -match flow, you'll start to understand why it's a different conversation entirely, really. So if you're a round-based person looking for a round-based experience, you're not going to find it here, period. That's just the way it is. It's not trying to be zombies. It's not even really, in my opinion, trying to be Outbreak. Because again, Outbreak felt like it had a sequential moving from one world at one difficulty to the next at another difficulty, etc, etc. And you were basically going through rounds even though they weren't called as such. However, I don't think that it would be fair for anyone actually, and I will happily make this a general statement, I don't think it would be fair for anybody to assess a new kind of game mode with zombies in it and declare it doesn't have a formula that is reliant on different rounds and therefore it cannot work. I think that that statement objectively is not true. There are obviously ways that removing the rounds from zombies could hypothetically work. It's just a question of whether in this instance you feel that this implementation does or it doesn't. And I think for many people, from what I've seen in my comment section, it is proving to be a fun experience. But for those who are really tied to that old gameplay format, it's just not designed to check that box for you right now. Now, the overall game to game loop is something that I think is sort of working, but still needs some tweaking in order to really sing to the best of its ability. And the reason for that is the usual zombies experience requires you to spend some amount of time in a match, usually between, let's say, rounds one and maybe 15 or so, setting up and building up points and building up perks so that you gradually increase the power that your character has until you reach some kind of overall rough plateau, which is when you've got your alternate ammo types, your max pap tier, that sort of thing. And then at that point, it's you against increasingly large numbers of zombies and large health numbers of zombies. And that's been the rhythm it's always been, right? Like you've got the zombies power creep and you've basically tried to race against that power creep and eventually you stop and the power creep keeps going and it just becomes increasingly about whether you can outskill that continuous creep. And in this, you get about 30, 35, 40 minutes through a match and you start to get to that point where you're reaching your power plateau. You get to that tier three pack a punch and you've got your perks and things along those lines. Assuming you're not doing any really specific strats in order to uh, get more money really, really quickly and things like that. Like assuming you're just sort of playing it at a regular pace it usually takes about that much time for most players. And you can observe this by going into the streams of people like multiplayer and Warzone YouTubers and looking at how much time they take to get set up and get to pack tier three. Many actually don't bother going to tier three and those that do take a little while to get there. And so you get to that 40 minute mark and then suddenly 
the timer in the match says you've only got five minutes left, those five minutes disappear. And in that time, you maybe do one contract or something. And then you've got 15 minutes to finish the match completely. And then that's it. It's over. That's done. The thing that they said pre-launch about story missions, which extend that timer, completely cleanse that sentence from your memory. It's not really relevant here at all. Those story missions are a different thing entirely that we'll talk about later in the video. As a result, You've got a 45 minute match. It's maximally extended to an hour, but the final 15 minutes are spent with you avoiding the expanding danger zone, like the gas. And that means you spend at least half of your match, if not the majority of your match, setting up. And then by the time you've set up, the game says stop and you have to go into the next match and do it all again. And right now that doesn't feel great. There are systems in place to make it feel less not great, such as the schematics crafting system where I can jump into a match, I can find ray gun plans for instance, I can extract with those, and then in the next game I can spawn in and have a ray gun with me so I don't have to spend the time setting up to get to that point. And therefore if we again imagine our little power curve, we're already bumped on along the power curve by the fact that we're spawning in with that more powerful weapon. Similarly, you can do that with perks, you can do that with your self revives, like things along those lines. And that means that the setup process is shortened a little bit. There's also crystals that you can use to automatically pack a punch your weapon when you spawn in, upgrade your rarity, like all sorts of stuff like that. So there are methods in the game to try and address the fact that much of your experience is otherwise just gonna be spent on setup. But even so, it still does feel like for the majority of players who are unlikely to to continuously have a full stash of 20 flawless crystals to max pack-a-punch their weapon or whatever, they are basically condemned to a purgatorial existence of playing through rounds 1 to 20 of a zombies match and then having to start again. And that is by design. And I think that that is overall, and I, I, I say this with, with bated breath, waiting for people in the comment section to tear my head off for doing so, but I feel like that is everyone's biggest gripe with the mode, the fact that there is the timer. I think if there was no timer, the number one complaint that I see in comment sections and just all over the internet right now would be gone. We'd be bumped down to whatever the number two complaint is. Like, that is the biggest thing that people are vocally moaning about. And I don't want to make out, like, moaning is a bad thing here. It's totally fine. If you don't like the timer, valid, I don't like it either, then speak up about it. That's great. That's feedback. That's useful to know, right? But what's interesting to consider, and again, if you're having an honest conversation with me right now and an honest participation in this discourse about what's good or bad for the mode, I want you to really examine your own biases here for a moment. I want you to ask yourself whether or not you think the mode could actually be less fun if the timer was gone, okay? Just play devil's advocate, okay? I'm going to run through some ideas and you tell me or not whether any of these seem valid. So if the mode could last for an indefinite amount of time, and let's say that was going to be a three hour play session, for instance, would you hypothetically play for that first hour to get set up, go into tier three, rinse tier three contracts for an hour and a half, two hours, do the exact same thing over and over again in that time in the exact same way as well, because it's the same match with the same gun and the same loadout and the same perks, etc and end up with a full loadout of flawless crystals and all those sorts of things and then feel, okay, well, I've been doing this for two hours. I've got a maxed out inventory. I'm going to exfil now. And then in the next game, spawn in, you've then got literally every single possible upgrade that you can. A perfect tool to get your rarity up, perfect crystal to get your pack-a-punch level instantly. Maybe you're spawning in with a ray gun as well because you've already farmed the ray gun plans, etc. And then in that next match, you jump in and the only thing you have in front of you is the exact same thing you did in the last game right? In the scenario I'm describing, I'm not saying you have to feel one way or the other here, but in that scenario, do you think that the game would actually, in a, a new way, feel stale faster? Because you would basically run through the content in a linear fashion much more quickly. As it stands, the time limit, I think, is there because what it does is it means that players go through different zones of play in any given match. They go through a zone at the beginning of their power curve where they're setting up. They have another zone where they're kind of in that intermediate stage. They have another zone where they are ready to do those tier three contracts. They have another zone where the time is running out and they have to consider what they're going to do about that. They have another zone then after that where they have to get to that final exfil and then the game is over and they get flung back to zone one. And I'm not saying that that objectively feels like the best thing ever. But what I am saying is that it moves your experience from place to place through a given match. 
A given match is not spent doing the exact same thing for three hours. A given match is spent with a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of something else. And I, so I think that's why that's there from Treyarch's perspective, from a design perspective, from a gameplay designer's desk to your screen. I think that's the flow of what's happened there. And I think the balance that Treyarch are going to continuously seek over the course of the next 12 months is trying to figure out how they can make it so it's not frustrating being forced back into those rounds 1 to 20 getting set up moments, while also creating some kind of experience towards the end of the curve that feels like it will be fresh ongoingly for play sessions that are two hours long or what have you. And that's a big challenge. It's just a massive challenge. And transparently, I think that that could be a hell of a lot better in the round-based mode as well. Because in round-based, you get to like, what, round 50-ish, 55? And the zombies no longer behave any differently. They do the same thing. And so the difference between going to round 55, round 60, and going to round 500 or 600 is actually just about how much time you can stare at your screen and do the same thing for. And I think that that's been a problem, to be honest, with high rounds forever. The prospect of going for a high round for me isn't that exciting compared to what it was back in the day during like Black Ops 1 because I look at a high round in zombies and I go, okay, well, round 125 is going to be pretty much the same as round 126. And if I've already had that experience in round 125, then what is round 126 going to do for me? It's just going to tell me that I'm able to sustain, like it's a stamina related thing as opposed to a new challenge of some description. And I think that that's part of the reason my Treyarch were like, you know what, let's take away entire focus on survival and rounds here, and let's play with a format where the challenge itself must jump around, like it cannot stay stagnant in the exact same place, because you've got different contracts that have spawned in in different areas, and you're not going to just do bounty contracts only. You might do an escort, and then you might do a cargo, then you might do a bounty, then you might do one of the holdout ones, or Outlast, I think it's called in this game. Like, they're trying to mix up the rhythm of the experience, and again, to be totally clear, it has its own problems, and this is something that Outbreak suffered from as well, because people got through those, whatever it was, six objectives or something that Outbreak came out with, and they were like, I'm bored of this. Like, I'm going through hours and hours of gameplay, and you're making me do the same six objectives over and over again, and that's boring. So I'm not saying that getting rid of rounds is the solution here. I'm saying that I think that Treyarch as designers are thinking about that question and trying to find better answers. And I think that Modern Warfare Zombies is taking a crack at that problem. So do you think that maybe there's potential for the mode to be less fun if there was no time limit whatsoever? Is that is that possible or not? Just have a think about it. It's just a hypothetical that I want you to consider. Now, we've talked a lot about gameplay. I'm going to move on to art direction here and aesthetic, but we'll kind of keep returning to gameplay because it's such a fundamental part of evaluating any video game. The art style for me in Modern Warfare Zombies, to be completely frank, is something that I kind of detest. And the plain and simple reason for that is that there is absolutely zero, as far as I'm concerned, charm to the mode, and it doesn't feel like a zombie's experience. There is pretty much no environmental storytelling anywhere in any of the zombies' play spaces, and that goes for the zombies' main map itself, which is the Warzone map, and it also goes for the little breakaway maps that you play on for the story missions in the game. None of them feel like zombie spaces. And Again, because I'm trying to be absolutely fair wherever possible about this, I want to clarify and say that sometimes some of the areas in Cold War, for example, also suffered from that. Not to the same degree that Modern Warfare Zombies does, but Firebase Z, for example, just feels like very generic military facility vibes. It certainly isn't the moon, or some such similar, very highly stylized space. It was a pretty simplistic space. And granted, they added some cool set dressing and window dressing to mean that it did have some zombies vibes to it, like massive Ethereum extractor things. But overall, I think it was limited. And Modern Warfare Zombies is limited even more. It's a war zone map that you are doing objectives that are not zombies on with zombies present. And as a result, I would basically just say that we're playing DMZ. It just so happens that the AI has been swapped out for a different AI. That is genuinely what a lot of the experience feels like from an aesthetic and art direction perspective. And I think that this is, to be honest, a tragic loss for the zombies mode. 
I think that one of the biggest contributing factors to what was so incredible about the early days of zombies, and this persisted for many years, don't get me wrong, but just to really zoom in on the origins of the mode, I think that we fell in love with areas like Verrucht because it felt like, despite the fact that it was already based on a multiplayer map, it was a zombie's space. The dentist's chair and the writing on the walls and all of those contributing factors felt very heavily zombies themed. And it didn't take long for us to get to Deriz and you explore that map and you are filled with wonder and questions about what the hell is going on here. It doesn't feel like a generic multiplayer map, despite the fact that it is literally built on a multiplayer map, but it instead feels like a transformed experience because you are so swept up and wondering, okay, what experiments are they doing here? And like, what is this lab for? And what doctor was working in here? And why can I see his little nameplate on the desk? Why is there someone hanging from this window? And why is there a help sign on this roof? And all of these sorts of things promoted a whole bunch of questions in everybody's minds. And this map if you take the zombies out and you take away the on-the-nose kind of aspects of the storytelling, such as audio logs, take those away for just a moment. If we're exclusively focusing on art direction, the visuals, the map itself, the map design, it's nothing. It's just nothing. And that's okay, all right? I just want to, again, say that there is room for there to be a fun experience in a space that doesn't feel like that old zombies highly stylized experience. Like, there is room for that to be the case, but I feel like it's a massive loss to no longer have that stylization. My personal preference here, if I'm talking about my opinion, is that zombies excels when that stylization is maximized, and any time that stylization takes a hit, the surrounding impression that we have is also uh, a victim of that hit. I think that the two are part and parcel together. And it's it's a tragic shame in Modern Warfare Zombies specifically because there are aspects of the story that I do feel like I want to investigate right now. And we'll talk story in a moment. I just bit my tongue. Ow. We'll talk story in a sec. But just overall, like I want to dig in to this world a little bit more. And as far as the aesthetic and art direction goes, there is no room and I'm not exaggerating, there is genuinely no room to do so. The uh, sort of devil's advocate of that, I suppose, is that there is a story mission where Zakaev is using these machines to perform this Ethereum extraction and enrichment process, and you can visit a room in the map that has similar sorts of canisters, but as far as I can tell from memory, that's it. That's the extent of it. Like, there's there's a vault underneath Shaheen Manor, and it's got a boss zombie in it when you open it up, but it's certainly not zombies-themed. It's very Warzone-themed, in fact. And there are bunkers around the map, and some of those bunkers have, like, spray paint next to them, which is cool, but you then realize that it's generic spray paint that's sort of everywhere in the map and is still there in the multiplayer version or the Warzone version or whatever. Like, it's it's not something that is unique to zombies. And so you're like, oh, it's, it's just sort of nothing. And the bunkers themselves are probably primarily there because of Warzone. And so you kind of come out of it going, well, that doesn't feel like zombies based on that aesthetic. And I think that also, despite the best efforts of the Treyarch team to zombify as much of the experience as possible and to bring their DNA to the mode, I think that there's probably been a lot of pushback from the Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer side on the extent to which they're allowed to take away from the modern warfare-ness of it all, because it really feels modern warfare. And it's tragic because modern warfare right now, the feel of that from an environmental storytelling and, and and perspective in that regard is suffering from its worst downswing ever. It's in all time because the campaign this year, that modern warfare experience, is the worst rated campaign in COD history. I give it a 2 out of 10. That's not an exaggeration. I've got a full video breaking down exactly why I think that's the case. If you think I'm just like talking out my ass here, please, I implore you, go watch the video. Check out my actual opinion before you start roasting me for having it. But I think that the campaign is dreadful, sadly. And so when you've clung on to the modern warfare aesthetic for the zombies mode, and then that aesthetic is really down in the dumps, it means that zombies also doesn't really have a lot of room to breathe its usual zombies charm. Instead, we've got a handful of monsters that feel like zombies monsters, but in a space where they don't belong at all. And 
the extent of the transformation of that space is a couple of yellow spores here and there and maybe a couple of ether crystals when you're doing certain objectives and it's kind of limited so as a result for me so far environmental storytelling gets a zero out of ten because there isn't any i wish i could say that it was a two even but i just don't think it is and if you'd like to prove me wrong in the comments by the way please do because i would love nothing more than to find areas of that map that do feel like they have that old school zombies charm but so far i've explored i feel like 95 percent of it and it's not there now then story okay so stepping away from environmental storytelling and moving towards just overall story this is a complex one okay because the cold war zombie story was something that i feel was extremely simplistic and didn't wrap me up the way that the previous story did by a country mile okay the cold war zombie story just didn't get its talons in under my skin and drag me through its narrative in the way that the old zombies experiences could and i don't really blame cold war for that and certainly in hindsight i think that i mean they had a tough job right they were rebooting a beloved story with a decade of canon and lore behind it and they were trying to set up new threads and new arcs and etc and that was never going to be an easy task to do in one game so i'm not saying that cold war is bad for the way that it approached the story i'm just saying that in terms of narrative depth I don't feel like it really penetrated the community consciousness in getting people really on board with new characters, new themes, new plot points, etc. And that's okay. First game, technically, in this new expansion of the zombie story, it was always going to be tough. And that brings us to Vanguard, which we're literally just not going to talk about because why would we? I, 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 I say this without hyperbole, the worst zombies experience ever and something that I, for the purpose of this video, think that it's actually better from a critique perspective to just gloss over because I don't think it's really representative of Treyarch's ability, nor do I think it's it's really even worth consideration in a, in a, a full and meaningful way in comparison to Cold War and this game because it, it was something else entirely. So let's just shelve Vanguard for now and let's say, okay, going from Cold War to this, like, do people care about the story? No, they still don't. Just straight up, they don't. And I mean, th this is evident. You watch, for example, Noah, who's I think a really good community weather vane in many ways, reacting to the first cutscene that you get out of the three that are available at launch in those three acts that are present. And he watches that first cutscene and he's like, I don't really care about this because it's just a lot of modern warfare characters talking that's not what i love about zombies i heard that he uh compared it at one point to uh something like the origins cutscene right that like origins intro or what have you origins trailer i forget which one it was but it's it's high octane it's intense there's questions that are asked and there's also just like a lot of of zombies charm and feel in there right and i think that in many respects if you look at that experience that noah had in that cutscene you can generalize and say many 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 other players are likely to have that same experience, right? They've been used to a decade of zombies or they've been used to even just a year of zombies. And then they get to that first cutscene having grinded through about 10 hours worth of missions. And the cutscene has Soap, who comparatively to the original version of Soap, we care about a lot less now because his entire arc has been messed with so much by the 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 ruination of the campaign in modern warfare 3 and so soap is there doesn't have the charm that you would hope that he might and he's yapping away as are the other characters and we're sort of sitting there going these are all new people and we have no motive to even pay attention right now like why would we and i think the it's a tricky position for Treyarch to be in because on the one hand, they have so much work to do in trying to make us care about these new characters while the operator system is in place. So let's let's uh, introduce that into the equation, but let's hold on to it for now to really dig into in a moment. But they've got so much work to make us care about these new characters and they are then faced with the disconnect and the dissonance that comes from SOAP or Laswell showing up in these cutscenes and being boring modern warfare characters. And that's almost uh, intended to be no critique of Laswell. I think that Laswell in the campaign is like, fine. There's nothing wrong with her character. It's just that for me, in a year where modern warfare as a series, as an IP, as a vibe, as a feel, right, is in its biggest downswing ever, you don't have any associated kind of clout with bringing characters from that very bad story 
into the Modern Warfare Zombies story now. Like, I look at Laswell and I'm like, well, the story you came from sucked. So why would I care about you? And, and, and so, so Treyarch are up against it. It is not an easy position for them to be in. I don't envy them. And I, I, I think that what's probably happened is from a business perspective, they've been forced to sell skins in Call of Duty in such a way that we don't have a static four operator system or a four main character system. We've got the overall operator system, right? And as a result, they're like, how on God's green earth can we tell a story when we don't know who is going to be there for the story to take place with, right? The operator system is just inherently flawed. I think that probably all of us agree with that. I think it's probably also fair to say that the operator system provides no positive contribution to storytelling whatsoever, right? So, so Treyarch are in a tough spot and combined with the lack of charm and environmental storytelling in the mode, it might seem like there is absolutely no hope for any kind of interesting story to take place through this experience. Like from everything I've said just now over the last few minutes, you might have written the story off already, but I want you to unwrite it off for me, okay? Because I'm not done. And I want you to uh, hold some space in your mind for multiple things to be simultaneously true, right? I think that Treyarch's job here is a really difficult one. And I think that there are failings that they have run up against, such as the implementation of operators and the need to adhere to the rules of modern warfare, which are bland and boring and very not zombies also. And so that stuff is true. But at the same time, if you watch act one, that first cutscene, and then you stick it out and you watch act two, and then you watch that third act three cutscene. Is that act three cutscene cool? I'd say, hell yeah, it is. I like that cutscene a hell of a lot. I think that it's freaking awesome, to be honest. And again, I'm not just saying that for the sake of it. I genuinely think that a cutscene in which a new character successfully manages to basically blow up a massive ether worm, and then we see the sky is open, and on the horizon, a greater threat awaits. That's the sort of thing that uh, 10 years ago I would have been screaming at, guys. So the fact that that's in the game, is that negative? No. We need to be honest with ourselves here. We can recognize the failings while also being like, you know what? That cutscene kicks ass. And what that cutscene also does is interestingly, it sets up this new character to potentially be a little bit more of a zombies character than a modern warfare character. Like, I feel like Treyarch are almost smartly trying to toe the line where the Activision execs think, oh yeah, this is a story that's connected to the modern warfare universe, so thumbs up. But the Treyarch team are like, well, it is, but we're going to tell the story in such a way with new characters that aren't touched on elsewhere in Modern Warfare that it actually might as well be its own universe and it's not going to be spoiled. Like the milk is not going to curdle at the mere mention of Zakaev or Soap or Laswell or whoever. Like they might be able to actually tell a sort of contained story with Ava that focuses on her sort of contact with the void here and that she is the protagonist of or at least the key character of and the surrounding characters like the new comms people who speak to you during your missions in modern warfare zombies they can maybe support and be present but they don't necessarily have to feel like modern warfare characters the entire time in the way that someone like soap would do like i guarantee i swear to you I don't know this. This isn't insider info, but I'm so confident. I'm so, so confident that there has been at least one meeting, if not probably a hundred at Treyarch featuring devs from Infinity Ward and Treyarch has gone, we want Soap to do this, this and this in a zombies way. And the Infinity Ward devs have gone, uh-uh, Soap has to stand up straight. Soap has to be a badass. Soap can't be weak. He has to, to look cool the entire time. He always has to have his army togs on, like blah, 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 blah. I guarantee those meetings have happened because it's nothing new in just intellectual property in general, right? Like the same thing applies to Marvel, for example, like with Spider-Man. They won't let you put Spider-Man in an ad and like get beaten up by like a Lego person because it would make Spider-Man look weak or Batman or what have you, right? Like these companies all have massive rule sets about how their different character kind of IPs can be used. And I, I guarantee that's the case for Soap. I guarantee there's just red tape everywhere. Same with Price. But with someone like Ava, bro, turn her into a zombie, rip her in half, give her 
four arms, uh, make her completely crazy, make her weak, make her powerless, make her a god, make her powerful. I think that the rules are pretty much open for her in complete contrast to the Modern Warfare cast where they're like, oh no, we, we don't need to do anything at all. It can't be a cool story. Has to be boring. And I think that the Act 3 cutscene takes us a step in that direction where we're going to finally start to see Treyarch maybe be able to breathe a little bit with this story. And that's very positive. That is a very, very positive step. It's one that it could absolutely go nowhere. It could be a whack story that nobody likes. And I would gladly watch this video back in a year's time, having also played through a story that sucked. And I would still stand by what I'm saying right now because I'm clarifying, I'm declaring it is a potential for good stuff to happen. It is not a realized example of good stuff happening beyond the Act 3 cutscene and some of the sort of setup in Act 1 and Act 2. Now, God, it's so difficult making these videos. I really question, like sometimes I'm like, would people rather I just do an eight minute video on my thoughts here? And then other times I'm like, no, I can't do an eight minute video because I have to add so many disclaimers and so many alternative points of view. And I have to consider the round based guys and the casual guys and the outbreak guys and the people that don't like anything else or anything in the world at all ever actually. The people that are unhappy, the people that are having a good day. Like I feel like I've got to try and contain all of this and cram it in here and then speak it out into the world. And okay, just going to regulate for a moment. <sighs> Breathe. It's all right. I'm sorry this video is long. We might not even be halfway yet. Oh God. If you do like these endless, massive rants about zombies, these, these video essays practically that I just sit down and speak out into the world, please leave a like on the video and leave me a comment just being like, I, I do actually want to watch this. <laughs> like, it would be very affirming for me because I have so many doubts. So, so many doubts. Okay, so... I, I want to continue on the story point for a moment and talk about the audio log system. And I think that overall, the audio logs really need some work, I would say, because radios in zombies have been a storytelling mechanic for a very, very long time, right? You go back to Shinonuma and there's radios and you're like, whoa, that's crazy. You're consistently gonna, gonna see that as one of the primary storytelling methods if you go back to those original maps. And I think that when done right, Audio logs and intels and radios are some of my favorite things in video games ever. And again, I, I, I can quote examples of this. I think that the radios in Blood of the Dead, much as the community has strong opinions about that map, those freaking radios give me shivers every single time. If you want a video on those blood radios brought back for 2023, I'm, I would be so happy to do that. They're one of my favorite things that the zombies team has ever done. Similarly, the radios in, you're never going to guess the map I'm about to say. You literally are not going to guess the map I'm about to say. The radios in Alpha Omega, oh, they are so good. The chills are, they're literally forming on my arms as we speak. They're so freaking good because zombies has a had a blessed existence in many ways because it's been able to bring in world leading voiceover talent to dish out these stories that have just been so visceral and and and, and so layered and so complex and so so heart-wrenching in some instances and in others so 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 disgusting almost and 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 and, and have almost felt distasteful or uh, distasteful is maybe the wrong word but they, they they've felt like something that you, you can't take your eyes away from like you are glued to this this narrative unfolding in front of you because it's 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 just got so much to it and i love that about zombies and i sadly really don't love that in the audio logs that we've had so far in Modern Warfare Zombies. So I'm going to read out a transcript real quick of one of the radios that we have in Modern Warfare Zombies. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of flavor of that and then we're going to do a little other thing, but I'm not going to spoil it. So first of all, Modern Warfare Zombies radio uh, H7 in Shaheen Manor in the little army outpost featuring this guy called Fletcher. Okay, listen up, you sh**. I'm only going to say this once. We're about to enter the outbreak zone. That means no fucking around. Whatever you've heard about these scody bastards is none of your concern. You're here to earn a paycheck, which means following the contract to the letter. Wander off, engage with anything outside of this unit, or make the grievous error of voicing your contrary opinion. Consequences will be swift and merciless. And if anyone pulls any shit that undermines the legitimacy of terminus outcomes, you'll be terminated in every last sense of the word. All right, speech over. Let's move out. If we just break this down, okay, just for a moment, what does this achieve as a radio, as a, as a piece of game design? What does it achieve? Well, it tells us 
that Fletcher is presumably the leader of Terminus Outcomes or certainly high up the food chain. I'm, I'm ignoring external knowledge here. So we're just going based on what the radio itself tells us is that he's high up that food chain. It doesn't tell us that he runs the whole thing. It tells us he's high up and he has a sort of can-do attitude and he doesn't take any crap from his team. Like he is very, very to the letter. This is what you do. And the reason they're doing it is for money. Now, I'd like you to take a second again to self-examine here and think about what you felt during that radio. Did you feel pulled in to the narrative? Did you feel like Fletcher was someone that you wanted to know more about? Did you feel like he had some kind of dynamic element to him? Did you feel like there was complexity there? Did it make you want to ask further questions? Did it make you want to find more audio logs, etc.? I want you to self-examine, okay? Just take two seconds. While you're doing that, I am now going to start reading another radio. I'm not going to tell you the map. I think you'll probably figure it out quite fast. But I'm going to read it and then I'm going to ask you some different questions once we finish it, okay? Stephen, this letter is to go to the Reichstag High Command immediately. Gentlemen, it is with the utmost urgency that I draw your attention to the lack of funding being injected into the Castle Project. While I believe we are close to realizing the ultimate plan, we still have several years of development before it is ready. It would be folly to cut our expenditure so early in development. As you know, early tests on the MX have easily outperformed expectations, and we fully anticipate mass producing the MX within the next few years. Work on the matter transference has, however, come to a standstill. We simply do not have enough cruciferous circuitry to continue the experiments. The test subjects have survived teleportation, but are currently unresponsive to commands and cannot be controlled. If we are to overcome this obstacle, we need to increase the frequency and size of the experiment. To this end, I suggest we find not only a regular supply of cruciferous circuits, but that we also find a larger conduit to channel the energy. Our operatives in America have informed us that the US have a large supply of circuits at the Nevada base, so time is of the essence if we are to stay ahead of them. This cannot be done if you cut the budget, nor can it be done if you insist on pressuring us into action before we are ready. I am, of course, available for discussion of the matter, but in the meantime, I will continue with work here and try to win this damned war. Signed, etc., etc., Dr. Blaze. Now, I know, okay, there is plenty of room for you to comment and say, this little experiment we're doing, Milo, is stupid and flawed because you're comparing apples to oranges and it's not fair and you're cherry picking and all this sort of stuff, right? I get it. I'm not saying that this is a perfect example or a perfect comparison that I'm making, but I just want you to examine that little radio that I just read out to you and ask yourself, based on what I just said, with all of those components in place and with all the things that were mentioned in there, what did it make you feel? Did it make you ask questions? Did it make you want to know more? Did it make you want to know which map that's actually from? Did it make you want to maybe go and search for more radios on that map? Did it make you want to know who Dr. Blaze is? Maybe you're wondering who the other people referred to are. And maybe you're actually thinking, hold on, that's not something that I've heard in the zombie story before, but it certainly feels familiar. So what's going on here? As you consider whether or not it successfully evoked some curiosity and 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 uh, try to sort of dig into your psyche and, and, and get your interest, I'm just going to have a little chuckle and reveal that I actually swapped out all of the references in that radio to the old zombie story and replaced them with totally made up names and objects and all sorts just so that you wouldn't be like, oh, they mentioned element 115 and so I love it. Wow. Like I wanted to to remove that variable, all right? It was a little bit of a switcheroo. It, it, I lied to you. Sorry. It's actually a message that starts with Sophia. It's signed by Dr. Maxis and he's talking about element 115, the whole thing. Cruciferous circuits. Yeah, made it up. But I still feel like the made up version has stuff in there that makes you ask questions. That's the whole premise of the zombie storyline. That's the whole premise of storytelling in zombies. I made an entire video on the exact topic, this exact topic. And I, I really truly feel like, like that radio did that very successfully. I don't feel like the Fletcher radio does anything. And we could read another radio here. This one's from Ravanov, a returning character. So there's some familiarity there. So there should be some more affinity. Ravanov says, Captain Sergei Ravanov, personal log. Perhaps I should stop saying rank. It was stripped from me long ago. I've been many things since I left Spetsnaz. Informant, traitor, requiem operator, mob enforcer, instrument of revenge, slayer of monsters. Decades have passed, the world transformed. And yet here we are again. At least this time we had a plan in place. 
Operation Deadbolt came together overnight. My colleagues seem capable enough, even if they do not trust me, and why should they? But there is already so much for them to absorb. My story can wait until they are ready. I only hope that this is my last dance with darkness. I just don't know how many more monsters I can slay. That one's from E5. Is that one more effective? Is that one piquing your curiosity? Is that one kind of going, ooh, maybe there are things here that I do want answers to that I'll find in other radios or in those cutscenes or what have you? And I would say that compared to the Fletcher one, it's a step up, like it's an improvement. He mentions that he was a mob enforcer and he mentions that he was an instrument of revenge. Maybe that's a little interesting. Maybe that's a little sprinkle of, of curiosity peaking. But overall, if I was to break down what this radio feels like, it feels like the Treyarch team saying, I have things to tell you, but I'm not telling you them until season one, two, three, four, five, or six. There is so much for my team to absorb. My story can wait until they are ready. I'm sorry. That's dreadful. There is absolutely no way in hell. And there's other radios somehow referencing the fact that they don't have his file. And so they're like, I wonder who this guy is, right? There is zero way in hell you can convince me that the Treyarch team, if they didn't have any seasonal structure and they didn't have any business requirement to tell the story in a certain way, okay? If we just talk about what would be the best for the story, period, there is no world in which they start the story with something that says, I have a story to tell you, but I can't tell you it yet because you're just not ready. No. <laughs> just no. And it's these sorts of decisions and I'm saying decisions here because ultimately I think that they do have a choice. I think that there is a choice here that's being made. I don't think that it's entirely down to, well, the sort of business side of the of the company really required us to do it a certain way. And so there is no choice present. I think as as fans, if we were to say, no, it's it's totally fine. It's whatever, like uh, whatever. I think the, that we would actually be doing Treyarch a disservice. I think that it, 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 it's, it's not a good enough excuse to say, well, they had to because they don't have an operator system because they have to sell skins, and for that to be the entire conversation. Like, I think that there's still room to say, and therefore it's bad, right? And that's what I'm doing. I think that what this radio does with one of the characters that should be really fascinating is it says that he did one thing, mob enforcement, that I wasn't aware of previously in his kind of bio, and then it's reinforced the very boring modern warfare vibe of Operation Deadbolt are here to make sure no one knows about zombies or whatever. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. And I guess he's getting old because he doesn't know how many more monsters he can slay. And there's more to the story, but in the most painfully on the nose way possible, my story can wait until they are ready. <laughs> huh? No, I hate it. I just hate it. So the radios that people are finding are having that kind of impact, I would say, on the general populace. Certain super fans on Twitter.com, I'm sure, are eating those up and having a good time, all right? I'm not speaking for the entire community here. I'm just saying that I think that the general reaction to a radio, especially like that Fletcher one, for example, is going to be, why are they still yapping? Yo, why are they yapping, though? Like, can they? Can I turn this off? Can I, can I un-turn on this radio? Like, is there a setting for that? Does the machine have an off switch? What if I grenade it? Will he stop talking then? That's what people are going to do when they find those radios. And so as a result of that, people in the zombies community, the most obsessive, granular, secret finding community, Easter egg hunting community I've ever been a part of, right? The zombies community has basically given up on finding more radios. I know that this sounds insane. It almost sounds like I'm talking about a different community entirely. I guess part of the reason for that is that I am. It's the modern warfare zombies community, not the wider zombies community, because many of the wider zombies community are hardcore round based people that aren't buying modern warfare zombies. I get it, okay? But the zombies community that are playing the game have posted, I think, and I, 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 I will double check this right now, actually. We're going to do it live. I think like five videos on the audio logs. Five videos. Let me see. Uh, Modern Warfare 3 zombies, and then I'm going to do in quotes audio logs. That's going to be my search. I see one video from Killer Stitch with 30 views, who also had a Twitter thread. He's posted a bunch of locations, so like thumbs up for Killer Stitch. Then the next video is not audio logs. The third is not audio logs. The fourth is not audio logs. Okay, so maybe we need to try a different search term. That was one video. So maybe I need to change my search term. Let's try the word Intel instead. And I'm going to sort here by this month. There are no videos. There are genuinely zero videos with Intel in the title, which focus on those 
pieces of intel in Modern Warfare Zombies. Let's do another search. Let's do radio. Not the word radios, just radio. And again, we're going to filter by this month. And there is nothing. There is a video of epic radio chatter from the Danger Close mission in the campaign. And that's it. That's genuinely all there are. If I change my search term again and take out Modern Warfare 3, so it just says zombies, then we're finding a couple more. So again, filtering by this month. We've got Ether Bunny, another one from High Hopes Gaming, another from TikTokle Nuke, one more from RA9 Ghost, and then the next video is Fortnite. So that's four videos in that search and one other from the other search, and that is it. Blows my mind. In any other world, the zombies community would have found all of the locations. There would be guides to go to all of the locations to listen to all the radios. There would be there would be uh, uh, videos from me talking about that intel, those audio logs. I, I would be breaking that story down. There'd be videos from a bunch of other people also breaking that story down. As it stands right now, five videos total, okay? This is a game that has millions of players. Five videos total on audio logs and four of those videos are individual logs and one of them is a compilation of about five or six audio logs it's so clearly a sign of failure for the audio log system because nobody is engaging with it and clearly nobody cares nobody cares the videos here Modern Warfare Zombies Resonov Audio, 27 views, 33 views, 68 views, 41 views, and Stage had 30 views. Let's compare this to one of the least popular Zombies maps of all time, okay? I'm purposefully trying to find the least popular map here, Alpha Omega, all right? If I search for Alpha Omega Zombies Radio, right, it looks like there is a video in French with 29 radios, all played back to back. It's 36 minutes long from Kenshin. It's got 12,000 views. Or we look at this video from Calhoun, Tank and Peter conversation, okay? Talking about Phoebe. That's got 192,000 views and it's literally just a gameplay clip. Nothing happens in that video other than the player standing in front of the place where the radio plays from and just listening to it. 192,000 views. By comparison, nobody has even attempted to make that video in Modern Warfare Zombies as far as I can tell. Nobody. Because nobody cares right now about them because they constantly keep saying things like, I can't tell you the story yet. Boo! It's so bad. I get it. They're setting up. But they've been setting up for three freaking years, dude. Cold War Zombies is three years old. Like, tell the story for once. Please. And on top of that, on top of the actual content of the of the radio in terms of the dialogue being something that, as of yet, isn't provoking a lot of interest in me, could change when we find a new radio. I don't know. I'm open to it. But 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 while that is not happening, I think that it would make so much sense to just do something small to make people feel like interacting with those radios and finding the radios was a good idea. Let me play a radio and get 25 points or 25 essence or whatever and get 25 XP in the same way that I can get loose change from a perk machine. Why not? Can anyone just give me a reason why that's a bad idea? 25 essence. It's not OP. There's, what, 10 radios in the map? Maybe 20 radios in the map? Is there is, is there any reason why 25 essence three times, four times in a match, if you can find a handful of them, is a bad idea? No? But is it going to mean that people have at least a positive feedback loop, at least... Pavlov's dog will be clapping in the corner, like cheering them on when they do that because it'll be like, yep, you're going to do that again because you know that that gets you money. Like, is that is that a bad idea? Or is there a way that they could get the money without even having to listen to it? They just find the thing and like you knife the box, for example. You knife the laptop, it gives you 25 essence. Is that a bad idea? Because then it means that people might be like, oh, you know what? This is like a thing that is worth interacting with when I see it in the future. I'm going to run over to that laptop instead of ignoring it because I know that there's something there. And then someone might put together a little compilation of where they all are in the map. Because as it stands right now, the map is so big, no one gives a damn. No one is sitting there combing through every single grid square to find every single radio because it's a pain in the butt. And what do you get back from doing that? You get, we can't tell you the story yet. I hate it. I think that it is so unfortunate that the zombies radio system, which was so simple, but so effective, somehow has been reduced to complete inefficacy. It's a shame. And it wouldn't matter too much if the other means of storytelling were stronger, but the other means of storytelling aren't there. 
because the characters don't speak. We get the same sort of messages piped in from the, the people in our ear saying, your vehicle's not looking so good, mate. You got to get another one. Or they're saying, you got to kind of get out of that exfil zone because the ground is rumbling and it looks like it's going to be a bad time. Like they're saying those things, and that's fine, right? That's just like gameplay chatter. Fine, not a problem. But like, where else is the story content coming from? It's not the world because the environmental storytelling doesn't exist. And it is the cutscenes. But those cutscenes are gated behind 10 hours of missions and there are only the three of them. And so in some weird way, we've got an entire world's worth of content here. And the amount of story content that comes from that is seven minutes of cutscene. And it's just like, okay, those cutscenes are sick. I love them. But what about all the in-betweeny time? Like, what happens when you found the cutscenes? What happens when you watch them on YouTube because they were leaked before the game even came out? Like, what happens What happens then? Why, where do you engage with the story beyond those? Where do you engage with the story in the game? And I would, I would offer the proposition, the potential answer to you, that you don't. And I think that's tragic because it's not zombies. That's not the zombies way. Now, with all of that said... I want to come back to the fact, oh my god, I hate having to give all these disclaimers and go back and forth and devil's advocate and blah, 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 blah. I want to be very clear. I think that the story could be really cool. Remember, because I said that there was that cool potential. I like what they're doing with Ava and I want to know more about that rift that was there and I want to know more about that weird portal in the sky and I want to know more about all of these things, right? I really, really, truly do. It's just that currently... I'm experiencing some frustration with my ability to actually dig into that part of the experience, which in another life 10 years ago, I did for many, many moons on Duris. And I literally would just get one zombie left alive and I would go and stand and stare at a desk and be like, oh, look, they've got a drawing of a spine. And I wonder if they're like doing some experiments on this. That Those are just not here in this. I played Zetsubo yesterday. There is more environmental storytelling in those two little lab rooms where you put the bucket in in Zetsubo than, and again, I don't think this is an exaggeration, the entirety of the Modern Warfare Zombies map because it's a war zone map. And I want to engage with the story because I like building blocks that they've introduced. I just can't because they're behind this glass wall. And when I bang on the glass wall, the glass wall says, my team aren't ready for me to tell that story yet. Ah! Ah. The story's cool. The delivery needs work. That's the summary. That's the synopsis of this section of the video. The story is cool. The story is cool. I really truly believe the story is cool. The delivery needs so much work. Okay, mission system. Let's talk about the mission system. Yay! The mission system needs some work. It's a cool idea. And I like the fact that there is some steering for players to not be aimlessly wandering around when they're playing Modern Warfare Zombies and instead to have some direction and some things to do that are not camo grind challenges, but other challenges. I think that that's a positive addition for sure. And uh, I mean, I'm speaking from definite experience here in that I was the first person to ever finish them all, right? I got that first in the world, worm boss fight clear. We'll talk about the boss fight in a minute, but that means that I had grinded through 36 hours of missions in order to get to that point. And so I've, 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 I've really got intimate familiarity with what that system was like to progress through. And I know that there are people out there that will say, hey, Milo, you're a dumb dumb because you chewed through it really fast and that's not how most players will experience it and therefore you can't evaluate it and da 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 da. I know that there are going to be people that say that. The thing is, what I'm about to say is the same critique whether you play it once a fortnight or once a day, or in one sitting, like I did, okay? And that critique is that if you make any real engagement with the zombie's story gated behind 10 hours of content to get to that first cutscene, and then that first cutscene isn't bombastic, instantly hooking you in, it's just yapping, if you will, you run a very severe risk of making those people never care about the story ever again. Reason being... By the time season one rolls out, people are still going to be working on those act one missions. And so by the time the story progresses, they're going to be behind. And then the story and the way that Treyarch tells it is going to stall 
because they're gonna realize, oh crap, nobody knows who Ava is, so we need to have another radio from her being like, so uh, just so you guys know, I'm Ava, and I've 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 been been killing zombies for the last ten minutes trying to get up to this rooftop here, and it's just not going very well. But I'm I, I'm trying to do this because I was working for this guy, and you might have already seen this content in the cutscene, but because you didn't grind hard enough to get to the cutscene in time, and we've deprecated that content now, like it's sunset, it is gone from the game. We have to give you this extra radio so that you can catch up. But nobody cares about the radios in the game, and so ultimately you you sort of shafted either way but it's it's all right right because you bought a skin so it's all good and like uh i saw this this ravenov guy and he was he's, he did this radio where he, he talked to you and he said ah oh, well actually I, I can't tell you the story right now because uh, it's not season two and i i got to wait till season two i got to wait till that dlc when people have been spending enough on the skins in order to then actually finally open my yapper and tell you the story right so i saw him do that and i was like that's a great idea buddy so i'm gonna do the same thing so i'm gonna reiterate what i've already said here but i'm not gonna say anything new we're gonna get stuff like that except voice acted infinitely better than what i just did <laughs> i like her voice acting it's really good like I, i'm a big fan of her character and her voice acting but again delivery in terms of gameplay, in terms of game design, lacking. Anyway, the mission system, having a 10 hour grind to get to that first cutscene and then the cutscene being boring, I think is a real danger for Call of Duty. It's going to mean that those more casual fans who like the zombies story, like the zombies mode, who normally could play through an hour and a half Easter egg and get that story hit and also just get infinite constant story hits from the world around them are basically gonna comparatively get nothing this year and i i i think that that's something that needs to be really carefully handled and i i also feel like the types of things in those missions also could do with a lot of work we, we've talked for many years in the gaming community about fetch quests right and how old rpgs would make you run down to the shops and buy three loaves of bread and then bring them back to this person and you'd get 50 XP and 50 GP. Or you'd go into a field and have to uh, pick 10 nice flowers and then go and throw them in a river and you'd get 50 XP and 50 GP. These are fetch quests where you've just got to go and do some kind of arbitrary, boring, repetitive task. And once you've checked the box of the task, the mission is done and you get your reward. And no one likes them. Nobody likes fetch quests. And so over the years in general game design, we've seen massive pushes in RPGs and all sorts to try and avoid fetch quests wherever possible, or to maybe even subvert your expectations by setting up a fetch quest, but then you go to pick that first pretty flower being like, oh, this is so dull, and like a dragon lands on you, burns the field to the ground, and then you're like, oh, it's not a fetch quest anymore, I've got to fight for my life. Like, that's sick. And that's, that's sort of one of the ways that the gaming development community have tried to deal with the fact that it used to be easier to just be like, yeah, do this boring stuff and then we'll give you a thing. But nowadays that doesn't really sell anymore, right? Like players don't respond to that very well these days in 2023, or they haven't done for several years now. And unfortunately, many of the missions in Modern Warfare Zombies feel a bit fetch questy. It wasn't quite as bad as DMZ. DMZ was worse for this because it would be like, extract with five stims. Why? Like, the boring. Just plain boring. Whereas in this, it's it's usually better, and I think that it could have been significantly worse, so I don't want to make out, like, the mission system is like a 1 out of 10. It's not, but there are aspects of that grind that are a little frustrating and that I just wish were different. So, for example, having to get kills with a certain AAT on is in theory a cool idea because it's like okay we'll uh, encourage people to play in a way that they maybe don't usually play because they might normally use napalm burst and so to get them to use this other thing is good and that's that's promoting different play styles and is going to mean that that person's experience again is ping-ponged between different play styles instead of being static just doing the game one way forever and that being it so there's positive there but at the same time it meant that I was going into the matches going, okay, like my mission here is is like five mimic kills, for example. So I'm going to hunt for those mimics. And then when I can't find the mimics, I'm going to be like, oh, that's a bit of a pain. I, I, I guess I can't do that right now. I'm just sort of limited on how many are there. So I, I guess I'm going to do something else. The, the, the example that I would give to try and help elaborate on this point and make clear where the problem is, imagine you're doing a zombies Easter egg and midway through the zombies easter egg the game was like eh, well actually like these these bones that you need in revelations for example we're just gonna only spawn in like two of them this match and you have to just come back next time to finish them off and you'd be like well that's not what i'm here to do like i, I came here to do the easter egg 
and I, I, I guess I can't now. And that's not to say that there isn't other stuff to do on Revelations. Like, I could go and go for high rounds or something, I guess. Sure. But this is not a question of whether you could do other things. And similarly, in Modern Warfare Zombies, okay, I can't find Mimics, so I could just do Contracts and Exfil. It's not a question of that being an option. It's a question of that being the option that I want to choose in that moment. And it sort of feels like a lot of the time you don't really have that choice and you're forced to be like, well, I'm not going to grind through this to get my cutscene or my 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 story injection. Because instead, the game is like almost forcibly doing things that I can't just like grind out. Like the mercenary convoy is a great example of this. So many people are like, how do I get the mercenary convoy to spawn? How do I get it to spawn? Where do I find it? Where is it? Why can't I find it? And they're doing that because they want to progress in the missions. They don't want to just be like, well, I'll find it whenever and... I guess it will come up at some point. So it's fine. I'll do like five more matches and just do other things for now until it appears. They don't want to do that. And the zombies sort of flow has never been. You can't do the thing you want to do. You just have to be passive until that comes up. That's not zombies. So I think that in that sense, the mission system could do with some tweaking. And I, I, I think that there's real room for it to be really fun. Like, for example, if there was... <clears throat> If there was a mission, sorry, my voice is starting to give out. So I'm going to probably start talking a little bit differently here. <clears throat> For example, if there was a mission where I had to spawn into a game and do a challenge of some kind that was really drastically different to the normal way I would play, first of all, but also was just fun inherently. So for example... Do you guys remember camping on the catwalk on Doris? Like doing a challenge like that, like some kind of just tricky challenge or fun challenge. Or similarly, do you remember on Moon, the Tokyo and Rose challenge where you had to buy the PM63, pack a punch it, you got a Kimbo PM63s and then you had to camp in that one area of the map and it was really, really freaking difficult, but it was so much freaking fun. That sort of stuff in a mission system could be really cool. I think that could be cool. But when it's like, do this one thing that is just sort of going to be dependent on whether or not the game decides to spawn them in and it's sort of RNG based and then forces you to sit there through an hour of game like waiting for the thing to happen and then it doesn't happen you're like okay on to hour seven of nine of my grind here it doesn't feel great so I think the mission system as it stands right now I'm glad it's there I think that it's not as bad as it could be I think there has potential to be better but it does need a little bit of work and as it stands right now it's going to mean that people that otherwise would have been able to tap into the zombie storyline through environmental storytelling and through Easter egg end cutscenes are now going to be completely ostracized because there is no environmental storytelling and they don't have enough playtime. Like, they just don't have enough time in the day to actually get through 30 hours of mission grinding to get to the ending of Act 3. It's just not going to happen. And that brings us on to the boss fight. So, as I have mentioned... I got world first clear on the worm and in the match I actually brought in a random who was in the lobby and we just assimilated him into our team it was a team of three and I, I found this guy and I was like yo hop into our team he joined and then we brought him into the boss fight and he fought the worm and he was first also to defeat the worm I was the only one that got the achievement obviously because no one else had completed act three but he still beat the worm in that match that as a feature as a mechanic is so awesome it is so so cool that i brought a random player who i think was on his like second or third game of modern Warfare zombies ever into a worm boss fight hilarious and only possible in this mode so for that i give absolute massive props to treyarch for enabling such an experience fire pure fuego fantastic loved it but the boss is locked behind 30 hours of mission grinding. Not 30 hours of playtime, mission grinding. And are the majority of players going to actually get to that worm as a result? No. I think that there's a really strong chance that the majority of the player base are going to get to Act 1, right? They're going to go through Act 1. They're going to get to that first cutscene. They're going to be like, eh, sort of not worth the effort, was it? And they're going to give up on it. And the only thing that I think is going to combat that is the fact that they did successfully make a really cool operator skin and they locked it behind Act 3 completion. So we have opposing forces in play as a result. We've got the sort of the fact that it's not actually really contributing to a fun gameplay experience is a little boring to grind through the missions. Up against the fact that people really want cool operator skins and so you gotta grind through in order to get the bone collector. And this is a good thing. The fact that they actually custom made that skin just for zombies and they put it behind Act 3 is such a big W in my opinion because it means that you are seeing multiplayer people be like, I want that skin so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the steps, right? I'll go through the motions. And honestly, if they do that again in Season 1, and season two and season three with whatever extra story missions we get even if the mission system stays kind of lame it's gonna matter so much less
yes, because people will at least still get through it no matter what, because they just want the carrot on the end of the stick. So in that regard, I'm a little less worried about the worm boss being seen by like zero players. But without that, I think it's a real concern. And it's a real shame because the worm boss is really freaking cool. And I think that that's something that I, I want more people to, to experience and see. And a, a really interesting temperature gauge on this, actually, as someone who's completed, I mean, what, there's been like, what, 40, 50 zombies maps? I think I've been first in the Easter egg hunts on probably... 10 of those maybe more i I'm, I'm not actually sure but as someone that has done this several times and also made youtube videos about it immediately afterwards i do have a maybe somewhat unique perspective on just community sentiment surrounding boss fights easter egg solves end cutscenes, the easter egg race all that sort of stuff right this is the least excited i think i've ever seen the community be for the completion of a Treyarch Easter egg. Like ignoring Vanguard again, because it's just not worth consideration here, like I said before, I have never seen this little interest in the boss. And I think much of the reason for that is that when I beat the nine Easter egg first and I posted the boss fight straight afterwards, actually during the run, my editor, Joey Conway, posted that boss fight and it got a million views in 24 hours. Okay. When that happened, I think part of the, the, the excitement around that was the fact that that boss was available to everybody in the community. And all you had to do was do exactly what I did in my game for an hour and you could fight the elephant as well. But in this, there is no equivalent feeling of wonder of, oh my God, I could get that too. I could fight that now. No, you can't actually. You have to probably realistically grind for weeks because you've got a job. You go to school. You've got a nine to five, whatever it is. You're busy. You got kids. Like people have busy lives. They aren't YouTubers like me. And so it's weeks of grinding to get through to that worm fight. By that point, where's the hype gone? Like it's so much more reduced. And so I think that by design, I think that the boss fight is a cool experience to be a part of. But I think that the connecting tissue, I guess, between the generic game experience and the boss fight is where the work needs to be done. And granted, at some point, there's going to be a main quest Easter egg. And maybe that will solve all the concerns and problems that I have here. And it will all be hunky-dory happy days. Maybe. But as it stands, that is not in the game. We don't know when it's going to be in the game. It's probably going to be after Christmas is my guess. And so I can only evaluate it based on what's in front of me. Is the worm cool though? Hell freaking yeah, it's cool. Do I want to fight it again? Yeah. Do I wish it was more powerful? Yeah, big time. They said pre-launch, and this is a real issue, I think, in terms of Treyarch's marketing, and it's something that I could talk about for so long, dude, and I feel like a broken record when I say it, and people tell me that I need to just pipe down because it's like I'm just moaning all the time when I say this sort of stuff, but I think that it's important to say Treyarch put out so much conflicting messaging about this boss fight, and I think that it is harming our enjoyment of the experience because we were told that this would be the sort of experience, the sort of fight that would need all the people in the server to take it down together. We were told that we could create a 24 player super squad, right? Somebody please find that clip and then just please tell me how you're going to fit 24 players on that XFL chopper. I don't think it's possible. I don't think physically you could bring 24 people into that space, which means that they just it's a dirty word, but lied? And uh, ignoring that, you certainly don't need 24 people to take it down. In fact, you can do it solo and it's 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 just sort of fine. I had four people in my game. We were way overprepared and that's a shame. That's a real shame. I would have weirdly liked it to be more tanky and more of a bullet sponge, e even just so that I could have seen it slam around a little bit more and do stuff like that. That would have been cool. So I wish it had more health. I wish it felt more like a, a pinnacle objective, a, a pinnacle mission, a, a, a moment that I would remember in years to come. As as it stands right now, it was so easy. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to remember it in the same way. It's going to be remembered as a bit of a cakewalk. And I think that's unfortunate. And it could easily have been different. Like, I have such fond memories of the launch version of the Infinite Warfare Zombies Easter Egg, Zombies in Spaceland, where the alien in that map was incredibly tanky and strong, and it was a really, really hard fight. Loved that. Absolutely loved it. They nerfed it. It was unfortunate, but still, I loved the challenge. I think that if you spent 36 hours grinding for a boss fight like that, and then it ends in two minutes, you probably would have preferred it to end in five to ten. And so a little bit of more difficulty there would go a long way, I think.
But to devil's advocate my position yet again, because apparently I'm just a sucker for making my own life difficult, I have said in previous videos that I think Treyarch's key objective with this game, most important focus, etc., is to bring casual players into the zombies' fold. And maybe a cool looking boss that that player can take down easily without having a lot of skill is actually net more beneficial than a harder fight that they try realize they don't have the skill for, and then they don't try again. So like, in a weird way, maybe that worm is is doing exactly what it needed to do in being a weak little, little sort of wiggly boy. Maybe that's actually perfect. And it's not in our interests, I think, if you're watching this video, you certainly are not going to enjoy a 90 second worm boss. But this game, in some ways, isn't really focusing on us, or at least I don't think Treyarch's main focus should be us this year, because I think that Treyarch needs the main focus to be us next year, and the most beneficial scenario for all parties would be for as many casuals from this game to graduate into Zombies players in 2024. I think that would be the, the, the best thing hands down. So in that regard, maybe the worm is fine, I guess. I thought it was really cool though, and I love the fact that it exists in the first place. I just wish that there were other ways that people could tap into it, and I wish there was more hype around it, to be honest. Next up, let's talk end game activities. So as it stands right now, after beating the worm boss, like I, I sat there and I, I did my little moment on the stream. I gave the game a 5.5 out of 10 at that point, having grinded through all those missions. And I since then have been like looking for like, okay, what's the end game thing to do? It seems that currently the end game objective is to just grind schematics. So you can jump in, do tier three contracts. Those will give you schematics. And sometimes you'll get ray gun plans. Other times you might get a schematic for an ether tool or a crystal or what have you. And so you're basically building out an arsenal of schematics that you can craft in the game's menus. So you can go into a given match and skip some of that early power curve grinding. That's it. That is all. There are a few Easter eggs in the mode that are limited. They're here and there. They're sprinkled in. And I do like those Easter eggs a lot. Uh, but they are not massively extensive by any means. Uh, and they certainly are not something that is taking a huge amount of grinding. Apart from the elemental pop Easter egg, which is its own weird thing that nobody's really sure if it's bugged or not right now. And as a result, let's not talk about that for a moment. Just in general, Easter eggs don't offer a lot of replayability here. And, and if you don't really care about the schematics, uh, there's not a lot really to do, I guess. I mean, there's a couple of named bosses that you can take out, but they're very, very quickly kind of steamrolled. And then that's that. And I've seen people like Sulky, for example, high round zombies player, really, really skilled at the mode saying, I enjoyed the missions, but now I'm kind of running around with my head cut off. Like, I don't know what to do. And I think that's what Treyarch is about to be addressing in season one with the endgame dark ether rifts that are going to be opening, supposedly. It sounds like those are going to be endgame activities where we'll teleport to a new space, probably inside the dark ether, and then we'll be on a timer and we'll have some kind of objective to do. And that will allow us to extract with some new contracts, maybe some new wonder weapons, maybe, and just generally have something else to grind for beyond the base set of schematics. And that's good that that's coming, but it's not in the game right now. So I'm not going to evaluate based on the imagined version of what that is because I just don't know. And as a result, my my rating for endgame is that it's fairly weak currently. But again, for most players, endgame is months away. Like most people are not going to reach that 36 hour story grind completion for months. They're not going to grind out all those schematics for months because they are casual. And that's okay. There's zero wrong with being casual or being able to play for less time, that's not a problem. But just because I recognize that you are more likely to skew towards being on the hardcore end of the spectrum, generally, you as a more hardcore player are unlikely to take as long to get through that grind. And as a result, you're going to hit endgame faster and you're going to sooner realize that there's not so much to do in the world once you've grinded those schematics out or once you've just decided that the schematics are just not for you, you'd rather do something else. The, the something else is kind of not there right now. So it's like, it's okay. There's something on the way. Hard to evaluate really. But for most people, it's not even a problem because that kind of issue is a while down the road. Now let's talk about the outlook for the year, like what's coming in the future. So we're getting those end game updates, like I mentioned, those rifts, which may or may not be fun. We'll see, fingers crossed. We've got potentially round based on the way. There's been leaks saying that there is round based stuff that's in the code. There's all this conflicting chatter from people that got invited to COD Next. They have said that Treyarch said something about round based there or round based players having something to look forward to in the new year. But again, it's all conflicting and there's no official line on it. So can't really judge 
acknowledge that either. I, I, I think that that would be disingenuous for me to make assumptions about. And there is really realistically a chance that that's actually just all wrong. And there is no round base coming next year. And actually the next eight to nine months are going to be spent by Treyarch building the tech that would enable round base to even be possible in the engine because it's a new engine that they're working with and we saw what happened with vanguard they could hardly put the mode together in that game because they were struggling with the engine so much and so the assumption that there's gonna be round based in three months time is maybe a little overzealous i don't know i just don't know we'll see but again for the outlook for the year it's like it's a maybe i would say the one thing that's really positive is that sledgehammer's communications with the community have been very strong so far they've been really really trying to engage with community discussion they've been posting patch notes before the patches have even dropped that sort of thing is always a massive green flag it's a really really good sign and i think that treyarch are probably going to get swept up in that expectation uh, and they're going to need to be on the ball in that way i think that what sledge are doing is surely only going to rub off positively as opposed to being neutral or negative and as a result i think that there's probable good stuff to come there and i will say that one instance that has been really positive that's sort of linked to that is while i was grinding through all of those main missions there was a bug that came up where basically one of the missions was not working properly and i tweeted at treyarch to say hey this is an issue and i got a response within i don't know 30 minutes saying yes this is a bug it should work differently just as a heads up and then treyarch were in my chat while i was doing it and for the very end of my easter egg run or sorry my missions run and so they were they were they were present they were showing face and i get that that's like oh youtuber special treatment and treyarch isn't showing up in in other people's streams and stuff like i i get it right and if you're being honest you surely get it as well you recognize the fact that i'm a spokesperson for community sentiment in the mode and it's in treyarch's interests to address issues that i'm having on stream in a very public way and the 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 need there is outsized compared to the need of a given player that is equivalently streaming to one viewer just from a cynical perspective i'm not saying i'm more important i'm saying that in terms of them selling more copies of the game it's in their interests to try and smooth out bumps in my experience because my experience is so public right that that's that's that, that's that's not a controversial statement that's just the way the world works that's the way that capitalism works they've got to sell product so in that regard i get that you could be cynical about the point i'm about to make but i think the fact that they even responded to me in the first place is a change actually relative to what i've experienced from them in the past and it's more communicative than what i'm used to from them and as a result i'm going to give them a thumbs up on that and say that was really really freaking cool the fact that they did actually confirm that it was a bug when i wasn't sure meant that it saved me a huge amount of headache that would otherwise have really marred my experience of those missions and just uh, uh, given me opportunity to be upset and frustrated in a way that i avoided completely by their confirmation so i want to say thank you to them for that and that bodes well i think for future instances of that through the year where the community uh, on mass overall are having problems with stuff that they can then address and speak to and 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 communicate about like that overall is something that i think is looking like it's going to be pretty positive this year uh, hopefully long may it continue at least so that's some of the stuff that we have coming up this year an easter egg is coming at some point but we don't know exactly when and obviously there's going to be seasonal updates so with a voice that has nearly gone to be honest the question remains should you buy Modern Warfare 3 for zombies? And like, is this a fun year to play the game? And honestly, I would say if you are okay with a more chilled out experience that's very different to zombies and you don't go in expecting it to feel like round based, I think that there is a lot of fun to be had in this mode. I really genuinely feel that way. I've played the game for 10 days. I've beaten the boss fights. I've done the side Easter eggs. I've just jumped in farmed for a little bit, jumped out, done some camos, like I've dabbled everywhere, right? And I truly believe there is a huge amount of positivity in this mode. There is a huge amount of it. There's a huge amount of potential. There are some interesting story threads from those cutscenes that I'm excited about. Like there's just stuff there in general that is looking good. And a huge number of people in my comment sections have said, oh, I wasn't really gonna buy the game, but I gave it a shot and I actually really enjoy it a lot more than I expected. And like this is this is kind of sick like my expectations were totally wrong it's it's really exceeded those now I, I i i can't stress enough how frequently i'm seeing messages like that and i think that being precious about drawing a line between round based and other zombies experiences and saying it's not round based so i won't play it or so i categorically will not even sort of give it the potential time 
to impress me or what have you, I think that that is unnecessary. And I think that many, many, many round-based players would have fun in this mode. It's not round-based, so I'm not saying you'll have as much fun as round-based, but I still think that there is fun to be had. And I, I, I think that uh, as much as I've given a lot of critique in this video, for example, about the gameplay loop match to match, that doesn't mean that the individual moment to moment gameplay isn't fun. It is fun. And just because there are problems with the mission system doesn't mean that within the missions, I didn't have fun doing some of those objectives and couldn't have more fun in future. I did have fun and I will have more fun just because the servers completely suck right now. And that's actually something that I haven't brought up in this video, but it's just the general stability. And it's worth a real quick mention here. The servers are not in a great place. They've been very unstable. I've been lagging out of matches. I've been disconnecting. I've been unable to get into matches. And and it's not been a good time in that regard. But just because those have been unstable right now doesn't mean that that can't smooth out in the coming days, weeks, and months as we continue to get further patches on the game. I assume that that's probably pretty much top priority for the Treyarch engineering team right now and for the networking team. So the reason I didn't bring this up earlier in the video is just because my assumption has been that that is going to improve and it has already improved compared to day one on launch. Just because the environmental storytelling is an L right now doesn't mean that when we teleport into the Dark Aether Rifts in the upcoming Season 1 update, they can't completely turn that opinion on its head and have a bunch of environmental storytelling in there that I can play around with. There is potential for that. Not going to give it a thumbs up or a hell yeah, but there's potential. And just because I think that the radio system right now is lacking and could do with a couple tweaks doesn't mean that I think that the story is going to be boring for the entire year. In fact, I would want to emphasize the fact that I think the story is interesting now. Like right now, it's just that the delivery of the story could be improved. And that's something that I expect to be improved as the year goes on. Similarly, just because I think that the end game experience right this second is a little open-ended and doesn't necessarily point you somewhere meaningful doesn't mean that in three weeks when season one drops, we won't have a meaningful endgame experience that is really fun. And so with all of this in mind, right, holding space in our heads for many things to be true at a given time, my overall stance is this game is a buy for zombies. And I say that, by the way, having not been invited to COD Next, I say that in a position where I spent an entire year actively not playing Vanguard because I thought it was so bad and I made that very, very clear and continue to. I say that without payment from Activision. I say that without all the normal accusations of shilling, right? Like, let's push that aside for a minute. I think that this game is a buy if you are okay and open-minded to the idea of a more chilled out experience. If you're a solo player, there are ways to tap in. It's nowhere near as good as if you're in a co-op squad with one or two buddies, but I've jumped into games solo and I have had a good time. It's just more fiddly, but it's still possible. And I'd say the, 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 the key to that enjoyment is being willing to allow the game to dictate what you're going to do a little bit more so than you would in round-based usually. In round-based, you are the arbiter of your own destiny at all times. In this, sometimes you just got to go with the flow, whether it's the mission system, whether it's a contract you're doing, and there's an enemy team that's helping you out with it and you decide to join their squad go with that flow dude that is that's that's uh essential i think in this game mode and if you're unwilling to do that if you're unwilling to bend and you need to play your way you're gonna run into issues a lot faster because it's not the game that you want to play your way because the game you want to play your way is round based zombies and that's not what this is so i i, I truly think it's a buy i think that there is a massive amount of positive here i've had a lot of fun in the mode so far despite my critiques and despite the areas that i think it could improve in and to speak to the rating that i gave it i gave it a 5.5 after I finished all the missions and beat the boss fight. And that was me basically saying that I thought that it was an interesting foundation, but it was sort of missing a lot of stuff that I feel like it needed in order to get to a more positive score. And I think that to some extent that is still true, but my opinion on it is actually more positive now that more little side Easter eggs have been found, now that I've digested that end cutscene a little bit more, and I've just had more experiences in the mode, taking down mega abominations and doing those sorts of things. So for me, I don't want to be overzealous and be like, it's an eight, because if it's an eight, how does it improve to like a nine? And what does that mean for a game like Cold War? Like is Cold War a nine? And if it is, this is so different to Cold War and it's only an eight. It's only just below Cold War. That doesn't seem right. So I think my rating out of 10, which is a mega flawed system, but it's probably 6.5 as it stands right now. And that's a 6.5 with the expectation that through a couple more patches, a couple more seasonal releases, etc., we'll probably get to a solid seven at minimum. And I think that there's room 
for it to be anywhere between a 7 and a 10 by the end of the year. I think that the 7 is, is the guaranteed in time. It's just a question of whether or not they knock it out of the park with that story, whether or not some of the new story missions are really fun, whether or not that end game experience is fun, whether or not some of the Easter eggs that get added are good, like all those sorts of things. That's going to be the decider between 7 and 10. But for me personally, I think it's a fun mode. It's something that I'm looking forward to jumping into in my next game. It's so, so not a Vanguard year this year, and I cannot stress that enough and i think that there's i think there's fun to be had to be honest so hopefully you feel like all of the context i gave leading up to this was worth it because i was really trying to share different opinions and perspectives and and, and try to round out the 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 complete holistic stance that i'm taking on this mode and i'm i'm gonna be cranking out content for it as much as i can this year and also trying to just kind of hold the community together like spider-man on that what is it like a boat or something when he's like trying to hold it together i'm trying to do that guys it's difficult it means means that these videos are outrageously long. It means that I lose my voice talking about freaking zombies to you for an hour and a half or whatever it is. But I think I think there's a lot of positive to find here as long as you're willing to engage with it in a different way to what we've engaged with in the past. And now that I've kind of gone through all this, I want you to recall the start of the video and recall the question I asked you of, did you want me to feel a certain way about this? And because I feel the way that I do, does that make you feel different? Does that make you feel happy? Does that make you feel sad? I just want you to kind of consider that because I think reflecting on your own internal biases and opinions and stances and stuff is fun and healthy. Uh, so put me at 6.5 unless you're very rigidly only a round base person, in which case, fair enough, next year's going to be sick. We're getting two round base maps on disc. Sounds like it's going to be crazy. Link on screen right now to another video that I did just talking about leaks focused on those round base maps that are coming. Uh, and if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment just telling me that it was worth putting the time into recording it all. That would be appreciated. I'll see you next time, guys.